Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and I am feeling like making one of the most classic and iconic pasta dishes ever today. That is essentially a bacon, egg, and cheese in a pasta. So you can basically have it for breakfast, and that's perfectly fine. Actually, who am I kidding? I'll have wonton soup for breakfast, but still, absolutely perfect any time of day. I'm talking the spaghetti carbonara. Now, this dish is very basic in the way it's done. However, there are so many people who have their own little ways of mingling with it, if you will. So I'm just saying, this is a disclaimer, I might do a little something a little different to mine than you or your no-no or your no-no might do to yours. But, I assure you at the end of the day, it's pretty much the same basic situation here. We're really just dealing with eggs, cheese, and bacon. Or guanciale or pancetta. Some pepper and some pasta water. And that's really all it takes. Oh, and of course, the pasta. And for this, I like to use bucatini or percatelli, but you can typically also use spaghetti. I do prefer a long noodle for this. Whatever you do, try to use a long noodle. Anyway, we're gonna show you how easy it is to do. It's laughably simple. So we're just gonna grab a pot to boil the water in and a pan to make our sauce and make the most amazing pasta carbonara. Let's do it. So striking, you know. So the first thing I want to do is I want to boil some water in a pot. And to do that, I always use an eight-quart super stock pot. And I just fill it halfway, so four quarts. Nice and simple. Then just bring the heat up all the way to high and bring it to a boil. And I should say a rolling boil, meaning we're really getting going in there. And how long that takes depends on the type of cook tap you have, whether it's electric or gas or induction. Induction will be the quickest. But whatever, it's going to eventually get there, right? So while my pasta water is coming to a boil, let's focus on creating the amazing carbonara mixture here. And to do that, it starts with four eggs. And I usually just use large eggs here. But these eggs aren't gonna be treated equally. We're gonna take two of the eggs and we're gonna crack them into a bowl. And then we're gonna take the other two eggs and I just wanna focus on the yolks. Forget about the egg whites. And to do that easily, I'm gonna use an egg yolk separator to make that happen. So I just cracked an egg into the egg yolk separator and I wanna keep a mini bowl under it to avoid any of the egg white here from going into my other bowl because the whole point of this is to keep the sauce, the carbonara, really dense with the egg. And as for my egg whites that are left over from those two eggs, you can either cook them up and make some egg whites, do something fancy with them, whatever you want. In fact, you could actually freeze egg whites for about up to two months or so in your freezer. Just put it into an Eric Tight container and freeze them up and use for a later time if you want. Or you can just discard them, that's completely up to you. Okay, to my bowl of eggs, I now wanna add in cheese. It is not a carbonara without cheese. And to this, I wanna add in a half a cup of grated Parmesan and a half a cup of Pecorino Romano. Also grated or just finely shredded, that's fine. Now, what's the difference between a uh, Parmesan and a Pecorino Romano? Well, Parmesan is from a cow and it has a nuttier, more mild taste, whereas Pecorino Romano is from a sheep and has kind of a saltier, slightly more pungent taste to it. They are interchangeable cheeses however so if you really only have one let's say you just have some pecorino romano or just have parmesan you can just use one cup of either but I have both so I'm gonna go with adding a half a cup of each I'm also gonna add in one teaspoon of freshly ground pepper or if you don't want pepper you don't have to add any or you can just leave it out and if you don't really feel like grinding your own peppercorns I just use a little mill here you can just use the ground stuff that's already done for you Lastly, as an option, I also like to add in one teaspoon of garlic powder. It might be a bit unconventional for this, but it's just a little bit of garlic powder. Never hurt anybody. And now I'm going to take a whisk and just whisk everything up together. And it's going to be really nice and thick, practically like a paste. And that's all we got to do for now. Let's just set that aside. I now notice that my pot has come to a boil, and what I want to do now is I want to add in one tablespoon of salt. You can use kosher salt, iodized salt, whatever you want there. And this is optional, but if you want to have a really nice extra starchy pasta when it's done to help marry everything together at the end, add in a tablespoon of semolina or double zero flour, also known as tipo double zero. And for my pasta, I am going to be using bucatini, which is basically a thick hollowed spaghetti, but you can use any pasta you want. Sometimes this is also known as persiatelli, depending on the brand. Some brands have one of each, but really there's really virtually no difference between a bucatini and a persiatelli. We're gonna add this right into my pot here of boiling water, whoopsies. And we're gonna cook for whatever the brand is, every brand's gonna be a little different, the instructions for al dente. 
and we're gonna press down on our bucatini to make sure that it's fully submerged after a few moments it becomes nice and limber and I find the easiest way to avoid any spillover inside of a pot when boiling pasta isn't necessarily to put a spoon on top I've seen that before but to simply reduce the heat to a medium it'll cook the pasta just as evenly as it should as if it was on high as far as I'm concerned Okay, so as soon as I start to boil my pasta, I want to now focus on making my sauce. Or really just my olive oil and pancetta. You'll see what I mean. For this, I suggest using between a four to five quart saute pan. A saute pan is essentially a frying pan with a high wall around it. And it's amazing because it keeps everything in the pot. It helps things nearly not splatter out. But in addition, at the end, it's large enough to house all of our pasta when we add it and we mix everything up and toss it together. So to that, I want to add in two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, and I want to bring my heat up to a medium high. And after about three minutes or so of our olive oil heating up, and it's going to begin to shimmer, which means you can kind of see some waves in there. It gets almost even a little sparkly. It is time to add another key ingredient to this carbonara, which is essentially another portion of breakfast, our bacon or pancetta or guanciale. You can use any of those, but if you use bacon, make sure it's thick cut and we're just gonna dice it up. Whatever you do here, we're gonna make sure it's diced. You can get this in the market already diced like I did in the deli section. Add that to the pan. And we're gonna saute our pancetta in the olive oil for about five minutes, keeping it on that medium high heat. My pancetta is looking great. So I wanna kill the heat here and I actually wanna move my pan to a cooler spot of the stove. So I don't want it to keep cooking. Okay, and after the al dente cook time has been reached, just reach in there and carefully grab a noodle and then just try it out for yourself and make sure you're happy with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, very important step here. Before we strain this pasta, let's make sure that we take a ladle and we take one cup of that pasta water and reserve it. Use like a Pyrex and reserve that pasta water. Okay, set this aside. And now we're gonna bring this to a colander and we're gonna strain it. Okay, now that the pasta is all strained, I am not gonna have rinsed it, all right? I'm just gonna have put it in a colander and then add it directly to my saute pan where that pancetta and olive oil is. And I'm gonna use some tongs to toss my bucatini now with the pancetta and olive oil. Just kind of give it a nice swirl and a little bit of a toss in there. Get it nice and slicked up. Okay, and now that we got the bacon going, we're ready for that other breakfast component of the carbonara, the eggs and the cheese. We're gonna add that mixture, it's nice and thick, right into our pasta here. I'm also gonna take a half a cup of my pasta water, not the whole thing, just about a half a cup, and pour that over it as well. And now, we're gonna just mix everything together with some tongs, and the eggs are going to cook from the heat of the pasta directly. It's that simple. And then everything's gonna get married together as we add that pasta water with it, giving it a creaminess. So you really just get in there with the tongs and you just stir it and you toss it, you mix everything together. Now, contrary to some other people's beliefs, like my own sometimes, in my Instant Pot version, I add cream to this, a heavy cream. A carbonara traditionally has no cream at all. It's literally, the cream factor comes from the pasta water added to the cheese and egg mixture and all the other goodness going on in there. And you see right now, after doing this for about a minute, I just add the cream to the Instant Pot version because I feel like it helps aid it along nicer since we're pressure cooking it, right? And although that way is absolutely delicious, it's one of my favorite carbonaras ever, it's not essentially the traditional way to do it. This is far more the traditional way. And you see we have additional pasta water. I always reserve a cup just to be safe. I really only feel like it needs a half a cup, but that's up to you if you wanna add more. And guys, look at this. After a few moments of just tossing everything around, I'm gonna show you. Are you seeing this? Look at that beautiful carbonara we have going on here. Okay, I gotta plate this up. Let's do it. And now, let's eat. I'm gonna take my pasta from my saute pan with the tongs, and I'm simply going to add it to a bowl. Giving it a little twist sometimes makes it look all nice and pretty when you add it in there. And I mean, just look at this. I'm actually trying to avoid the camera, so I got some on the table, whoops. Listen, keep it real, my friends. No one's perfect. That's what napkins are for, right? Again, the egg will have cooked through virtually within a minute of mixing everything together. If you want to have reserved some of that bacon to add at the end, by all means, do so. Nice little touch here. And of course, you could also add some more cheese and pepper if you wish. And my friends, here it is, <laughs> Bucatini Carbonara. All right, it's just, 
it's just so beautiful. I almost feel bad twirling into it, but it, oh, I love Bucatini. Here we go. Let's try it out. It's a big forkful, actually. I want to do a little bit more. I don't want to look like too much of a mess on the camera. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a rich dish. It's rich. It's, it's essentially breakfast in a pasta, like I said before. Bacon, egg, and cheese, right? And Bucatini, in my opinion, is where it is at for this dish. Oof. Okay, yeah, hang on, let me, one more time. Mmm, mmm. The pasta is perfectly al dente. Again, you just cook according to the package's instructions, give it a taste test before you take it out, make sure it's not too underdone. Sometimes things can vary there, just make sure it has a slight bite to it. It is so cheesy, also, at the same time. This cheese is gonna provide that salt flavor. Um, Pecorino Romano, like I said, is definitely saltier than Parmesan. So if you want it a little less toned down, you can do three quarters of a cup of Parmesan and a quarter cup of the um, Pecorino Romano, or just all Parmesan. You'd use one cup there. Just one cup of grated cheese, period. Richard, give this a try. We have breakfast for dinner, yeah. because it's essentially bacon, egg, and cheese, and a pasta carbonara. And there you have it. Let me know what you think. Twirl it up real yeah, good. Mmm. How is that? Creamy. Like, savory. Cheesy. Cheesy. With a little bite to it with the pepper in there. You got that bacon in there. Yeah. The bacon grease, or what's called juices to make it sound nicer <laughs> in there. Um, also incorporates everything into that. Would you believe there's no cream in that, actually? It feels like there's cream in it, but there's not because we simply add pasta water mm -hmm. to it when we add the raw egg mixture with the cheese. But the eggs, again, they cook super fast because the heat of the pasta does it. We don't want it to be, you know, too much. There's no curdling whatsoever in this one. You're talking to me? No, no. I was just, I was kind of talking to you and them at the same time. I, you know, I just talk. It's at half the time I'm just talking to a lens anyway. It's nice to have someone else here. I'm glad you're enjoying it. So you approve? I approve. Good. It's the easiest thing to make in the world, too. Like, literally one of the easiest pasta dishes ever. It's one you shouldn't overthink. Thank you. Oh, he's taking the whole thing with him, as always, because I'm just so nice like that. You're cleaning everything up, you hear? All right. Oh, yeah, sure. In case you didn't know, I've written four cookbooks for the Instant Pot, actually. It's all one-pot meals, just as easy as making this. I actually do have a carbonara recipe in my original Instant Pot cookbook. It's right here, and it is absolutely delicious, but it is definitely different from this. This is definitely the more traditional way to do it, but I can be a little bit untraditional and put my own spin on things. As I said before, there are a jillion ways to make a carbonara, even though you have the basics. Everyone, I feel like, puts a little, slightly little spin on it, you know? Well, people will argue with me about this, but everyone argues with everybody these days. Anyway, just look at this beautifulness. It's, ugh, I, I literally, look at this. I, I'm just gonna take a, I don't have a fork with me, I'm just gonna take a tongue. Mm. Mm. That's amore. I totally have food on my face. Thank you so much again for watching, my friends. And the next time you're feeling some breakfast for dinner, make some carbonara, because it's sure to be a winner. Enjoy. Seriously, enjoy. Grab a bowl and enjoy. Mm -hmm.